Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, for another edition of Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, I am so happy to have on board, um, I would have to say, a personal friend, as well as a very intensely beautiful woman, Dr. Lori Nadell, Ph.D. We've had Lori on before in another book she wrote about her internal journey with, of all things, Surfing. <laughs> Dr. Nadell is a PhD and a specialist in acute stress, trauma, and anxiety issues. She has been interviewed in the New York Times, National Public Radio, Reuters, and CNN.com. During 20 years in journalism, she recognized a need to help people whose lives were shattered by violence, and she earned two doctorates in mind-body medicine and pioneered emotional first aid tools to help lower acute stress after catastrophic events. Today, we are going to talk about her latest book called The Five Gifts with a foreword by Dan Rather. And I'd like to quote Dan here. He says, Dr. Lori Nadell touches off many new sunbursts of thought as she guides us through what we need to know about the five gifts that are keys to coping with life's most troubling times. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Lori. Hey, thank you, Ellen. I uh, really appreciate your having me on your show, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Now, the subtitle, Discovering Hope, Healing, and Strength When Disaster Strikes. And let's share, because we're, we're in the studios of WHPC, although we are heard all over the world, because we're also um, on the Internet as well. Anyone can listen on iHeartRadio. But in terms of our local audience, Dr. Lori, you yourself dealt with this. Because your home was ruined, I believe it was with Sandy. Yes, um, and you'd been to that home uh, several times. I loved that home. Yeah, it's I know, so it was this beautiful, perfect little beach cottage, and you could see boats going by from the front garden, and it was uh, about 80 yards from the intracoastal, what we call the Reynolds Channel um, uh, on Long Beach, New York, and uh, the seawall broke. The first time the seawall broke was during Hurricane Irene, but uh, that, that, that was kind of a non-event. And so uh, a few people who lived right next to the water got some damage, but most people who lived uh, on the island didn't have any damage. But the following year, when Hurricane Sandy broke through the seawall, uh, the, the ocean and the uh, channel or the bay actually met, and we had four feet of water um, in the house, and uh, we we... Uh, managed to save the cat and get up into the crawl space and watch the water kind of inch its way up the stairs. And then when it receded, it turned out that the town's sewer pump had been uh, it had been blown away or destroyed by the storm surge. And so the 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 um, when the when the tide receded, everything was contaminated with raw sewage. So the the place was actually toxic. And I had to leave, and I was a FEMA refugee for a month because there was no electricity on the island, and there was no electricity south of 34th Street in Manhattan, so I couldn't go to work either. So it was uh, it was a definitely a life altering experience. So isn't that interesting? Because of course you are psychologically and professionally well schooled in dealing with disaster, but it's a whole other thing when it's you yourself. That must have intensified your therapeutic understanding of it to a degree that no amount of coursework could ever do. Oh, absolutely, and I, you know, I, I kept reminding myself. 
and, and this kind of led to the gift of humility uh, that I wrote about, that what was happening to me, even though I, I personally was in survival, uh, I, I also realized that a million people were impacted by the storm, and I figured probably half to three quarters of them were having um, identical or very similar experiences to mine. And so I realized that, uh, you know, that, that I was just one, you know, tiny human in a sea of humans who had been uh, seriously impacted by this particular natural disaster. And I had started writing before the storm, and I was writing about some of the messages that the shamans and indigenous healers had told me when I was traveling uh, and studying with them in South America in the 1990s. And they all said the same thing, which was all of nature speaks and you the people in the north uh, have stopped listening and so nature is going to get louder and louder and sure enough about a month after i wrote that uh, nature roared into my house in the form of uh, four feet of water that's just amazing isn't it it's it's actually ironic in a way but you know you lived through it and and you took that energy and created a whole new reality for yourself. And not everyone can do that so easily, but through the process, um, perhaps it solidified for you a way to share the five gifts. Well, I think it definitely uh, made it made me aware that it was uh, a few months after the storm that uh, that, that there, there were lessons that were coming through when I meditated that I wanted to be able to share with people. But um, I, I'd also, about a, when I returned about a month uh, after the storm, I realized that there was need for long-term support for people because uh, after 9-11, I ran a, a program for teenagers whose fathers were killed in the World Trade Center. And uh, that program went, went for like four to five years. The time of recovery, uh, you know, the help cycle lasts two to three months. But the recovery time um, is it's a cycle of three to five years uh, until you get to a point where you're not, you know, not thinking about it from the moment you wake up. And it's not, you know, it's not coloring all of your thoughts. Well, you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and my guest today is Dr. Lori Nadell, Ph.D., author of many books, and we're talking about her new book, The Five Gifts, Discovering Hope, Healing, and Strength When Disaster Strikes. And you can find out more at laurienadell.com. So, Lori, let's talk about, because, you know, it seems like there's disaster after disaster. I know you were very involved also because now you, like myself, am both a, you know, Florida resident as well as back and forth to New York as I am. And do you know when, and everyone knows, of course, the incident with the um, the Parkland Mm-hmm. Incidents. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Now, I was so involved in that because I live in the town right next door to Parkland, right next door, so much so that we heard everything. The helicopters flew over my house. The ambulances went right past my house. I mean, all kinds of um, of interventions were right in our face. And I know that you were involved in these ongoing events, just like you talked about 9-11. You talked about the storms here on Long Island. You know, something that was in Parkland that's nationally understood. What do these things have in common in terms of how your book, The Five Gifts, teaches us how to prepare and get through these kinds of incidences? Well, I, I think, you know, people very often, you know, of course, everyone thinks this is never going to happen here. And Parkland, it was, a, a, you know, it was and is a very safe community. And uh, I have to say, I work on a critical incident debriefing team uh, with the Broward Fire Department and, and uh, sat with the paramedics a few days after uh, the Parkland shooting and uh, have been uh, invited into debriefings with the staff and teachers uh, in the school and I'm communicating with several of the teachers uh, now and we'll be offering a, a workshop a spiritual uh, a spiritual resource workshop based on the five gifts that's going to be uh, the Bat Yom Synagogue in Fort Lauderdale on May 21st and uh, that's also go- we're also extending the outreach to people in the Parkland community to attend that 
So, um, you know, people, uh, I think, are, are still in a state of shock. And I know I've been very, very impressed with the courage um, and the dedication of, of each of the uh, teachers and the staff and the alumni association. They're, they're, they're really, they're very strong people. They're incredibly dedicated to the kids. And I, I just wanted to add that, you know, from my experience with the 9-11 adolescent program, most kids don't pick up the, pick up the microphone and start uh, a movement in front of the cameras. And as important as that movement is, you know, the, the five or six kids who, who were always in the news, uh, they represent the leaders of the school, you know, people who are, you know, the, the kids who are the president of the student government and, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, really the, the top five, you know, most extroverted, polished kids in the school. Most teenagers, in my experience, and having raised one also, they tend to shut down, they tend to withdraw, um, especially when something tragic happens. You know, they tend to go into their room. Maybe they talk to their friends online. Maybe they stop talking to people. So, um, it, you know, it, it's easy to be kind of seduced by the images of, you know, the parades and the demonstrations and the movement. And as I said, it's very important. But I think that there is kind of a, a hidden population of kids who are really, you know, kind of in shock and, and, and grieving privately and silently. And it, it's, I think it's really important to, to send our goodwill to them because for teenagers, it's, it's really, it's a much harder road than it is for us as grown-ups. What is what are you referring to when you talk about emotional first aid? I guess when you're talking first aid, it would be like first intervention when there is some kind of big incident. Well, you know, during the first 24 to 48 hours after an event or during an event like a hurricane or, you know, a, a, a king tide, for example, um, emotional first aid tools are very quick acting, uh, very short exercises that you can do that they, they, they work um, really in a matter of seconds to diffuse panic and anxiety. And the one that I, that I use, you know, most often is called color breathing, where you check in, you know, with your body to see where you're holding any stress or tension or anxiety. And then you kind of mentally ask what color would help my, the knots in my stomach to go away. And whatever color kind of pops into your head, um, just breathe it in. And you can either visualize it or you can sense it or you can say the word. Because not everybody's a visual thinker, so not everybody's going to see that color band. So just say blue, for example, blue, and just feel that that blue is blending with the oxygen molecules and finding its way to the knots in your stomach. And then when you exhale, release that knot, release the tension in your body by exhaling a different color. And when you do two or three rounds of this, you will feel calmer. You will feel more grounded and more stable no matter what's going on around you. So emotional first aid tools, they're not therapy. Um, they're not meant to replace therapy, but they're quick acting techniques that will help you in the moment and will also help you if your kid is freaking out, if, you know, your dog is barking and, you know, you can't get the dog to get quiet and then you're starting to feel upset. Um, it not, won't calm the dog, but it'll calm you. And when you're calm, you can reach out to the dog and help him. Great information, and we're going to go to a little break here, and I'd like to remind you or you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio. For more information on today's guest or topic, email whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was .5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. 
find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council.